Hello and welcome to the viewers of this video. This is the Orange Fan here, bringing you another entry for the episode Recap and Thoughts category. This video will be dedicated to the A segment of episode 9 of The Loud House, Overnight Success. We begin this segment with Lincoln telling the audience about how excited he is that he can finally have a sleepover. He mentions why this is especially notable because sleepovers in the Loud family is not an everyday occurrence. He recounts three different occurrences where three different sisters each had their own sleepover, Lynn, Lenny, and Luna, respectively. In the flashback for Luna's sleepover, we actually do get to hear Chunk talk. He's voiced by John DiMaggio using a British accent. But in any case, all three of those sleepovers had something in common. It didn't caused a lot of trouble for the not just the household, but also the surrounding neighborhood too. At least in Lenny's case, because Lenny caused a neighborhood-wide blackout. <laughs> but in any case, the parents were not happy about how these sleepovers turned out, and they banned them. And so Lincoln had to really fight tooth and nail in order to persuade his parents to allow him to have a sleepover. We see a flashback where he's giving a, um, a PowerPoint presentation about why he should, and in the videos he uses as part of his PowerPoint, he keeps getting mauled by cats for some reason, mostly from the house, the family pet cat Cliff, but another cat mauls him at some point too. Lincoln comments that he's very fortunate that his dad is a big fan of cat videos because that's what can allow him to have the sleepover, apparently. He gets on his walkie-talkie, and Clyde confirms that he's walking over to the house with his parents. So Lincoln goes to the door to greet Clyde, and we get to meet the McBride parents. Harold McBride, voiced by Wayne Brady, and Howard McBride, voiced by Michael McDonald. We get a quick scene where we get an idea of what Harold and Howard are like, and they're very prepared about for Clyde when it comes to sleepovers. And Howard in particular feels bad that he won't be able to tuck Clyde in tonight, but Harold reminds him of what their therapist, Dr. Lopez, told him, and then they head off to do whatever it is they plan to do for the night. And so Lincoln pre lets Clyde know that he has an itinerary. He's made a big schedule for his plans for what they should do for the sleepover, but Clyde gets, uh, is, Clyde finds himself interested in the activities of the Loud Sisters. And Lincoln can't understand this because he has to put up with his sisters every day, as Lincoln more or less puts it. And then it eventually gets to the part where we see a lot of the sisters interacting with Clyde, and Lincoln is accusing them of bothering Clyde when he's trying to organize a schedule. And Clyde tries to assure him they can do other fun stuff, too, beside what's necessarily in the itinerary. But Lincoln gets upset at Clyde and accuses him of wanting to spend time with his sisters instead of him and decides to just cancel the sleepover with him. Clyde, though, wants to try and make peace with Lincoln because he references what Dr. Lopez said about, about what happens with unresolved issues. But when Lori walks by, well, actually, she wants to ask Clyde's uh, opinion about, or what a man's opinion is of something. She wonders what Bobby means by texting hey. <laughs> and because of this, Clyde acts like a robot shutting down. <laughs> and so he's knocked out before he has the chance to make peace with Lincoln. Not knowing about this, Lincoln suspects that maybe he can invite another friend because he doesn't want to let all the effort he went trying to organize a sleepover go to waste. 
So we have a montage of Lincoln inviting over some other classmates of his. Two of them in particular are Liam, voiced by Lara Jill Miller, Lisa's voice artist, using a southern accent, and Zach, voiced by Jessica DeSico, who also voices Lynn and Lucy. There's a reason I'm bringing those two up in particular, and we'll talk about that a little later. But in the case for all the classmates, none of them can handle the uh, chaotic nature of the Loud House. In the end, Lincoln realizes that Clyde not only can handle all of his sisters, but he actually embraces it. He did, he did compare the Loud House to being like New York City, the city that never sleeps, earlier in the segment. But when he tries to contact Clyde, he doesn't re hear back from him. Lincoln assumes that he's angry at him, not realizing Clyde being unconscious. And so he actually does head out to the McBride house, and he even crawls in through the window of Clyde's room. Something seems to be in the bed, but Lincoln thinks it's Clyde, and he thinks Clyde's giving him the silent treatment, but he does admit that, that he did go a little overboard, and he still tries to apologize. When he returns back home, though, he finds Clyde with the rest of the Loud Sisters, besides Lori, <laughs> and he's surprised that Clyde is still here. Clyde at first thinks it's because he wanted him to leave, but Lincoln clarifies that that he felt bad for getting upset at Clyde and even apologized to him and said he apologized to someone or something back at his house. Clyde figures that it was what he saw was actually the stuffed animals under his bed. They keep him company. Lincoln pieces together that because Clyde is an only child, being able to interact with the Loud Sisters is something he really enjoys. And Lincoln and Clyde do make amends, and Lincoln gets rid of the itinerary, deciding they can have fun doing whatever Clyde wants to do. In the end, Lincoln and Clyde do end up seeing uh, King of the Rings, a parody of Lord of the Rings, and the Loud Sisters join in. The segment ends with Laurie bringing in some movie snack and Clyde shutting down like a robot. <laughs> <laughs> now this segment stood out a bit because while usually we would have a segment where Lincoln is the viewpoint character and one of the Loud Sisters is kind of the spotlight character alongside Lincoln as the viewpoint character, this one really had more Clyde as the spotlight character and it was a nice way to get to know him a little more besides just being Lincoln's best friend who hangs out with him and... Well, case in point, we actually got to see Clyde's house, and we got to meet Clyde's parents, the McBride dads, Harold and Howard. We still don't have a full understanding of what kind of characters they are just yet, but we still do get a pretty good idea of what they are, what kind of characters they're like. But it's not until a later segment where Harold and Howard have a more prevalent role, so... We'll talk more about that once we get to that segment, but as far as introductions go, this was a good way to help us uh, have a good idea of what kind of parents Harold and Howard are, and they definitely care about Clyde, so good on them for caring about your kid. That's a good thing to care about kids. <laughs> and otherwise, we do find out, although it was never... Although there wasn't anything that contradicted it before, like this is explicit confirmation that Clyde is an only child. Like they never implied it or never said it wasn't the case earlier, but this here outright states that Clyde is an only child. And actually, now that I'm thinking about it, whether Clyde was adopted by Harold and Howard or if Harold and Howard were able to find a surrogate mother, that was never clarified either. That's, I guess that's up to the viewers to decide until the show decides to answer that question. But uh, I digress. So what else can we talk about? Um, oh, that's right. Lynn's, during the flashback for Lynn's sleepover, we hear the dad actually refer to her as Lynn Jr., which confirms that one of the parents is Lynn Sr., because this was actually something funny. Not too long ago, 
some of my relatives and I were trying to figure out how do you distinguish senior and junior between the first and the second. From what we looked up, it turns out senior and junior is when the relatives sharing the name are parent and offspring, while the first and the second refers to relatives sharing the same name that aren't parent and offspring. So like, let's say a grandparent and a grandchild sharing the name or an uncle or a nephew sharing the name. And I suppose, yeah, an aunt or a niece too, because Lynn being a junior actually kind of reminds me of King of the Hill where Connie, his full name is Con Jr. She's the junior to her dad, Con. And although they don't outright say it in the segment, some supplementary material that was revealed shortly afterwards confirmed that Lynn Sr. is the dad, Mr. Loud's first name. Though... Though, to be honest, now that I think about it, I never met a mother who was the senior with one of her kids being the junior, but eh, the world's a big place. Maybe there is a mother out there who is senior while one of her kids is junior, so that might be, that's possible. I won't doubt that it's a possibility, but in this case, it's similar to Khan and Connie from King of the Hill. The dad and the one of the daughters are senior and junior in the case of the Loud House. Now, as for the main conflict about it, it was the first time we kind of saw Lincoln and Clyde in a disagreement, although it was more of a one-sided disagreement. It really was more on Lincoln's end that the conflict was, because Clyde was very willing to um, uh, make amends with Lincoln. It was just Laurie's arrivals kept knocking him out, and so it wasn't until Lincoln finally came back after visiting the McBride house when they were able to make amends. And, and that was a case where you could see both sides of it, even though, yeah, it was wrong for Lincoln to kind of yell at Clyde about that, though I can understand why Lincoln didn't really consider why Clyde would want to hang out with his siblings, because... Being siblings, Lincoln does spend almost every day with them, or every day with them, really. So I can understand why Lincoln acted the way he did, even though I didn't agree with the way he handled it. And also, yeah, coming from someone who also likes to have schedules and doesn't like to deviate from them too much, I do agree Lincoln kind of went overboard on the schedule department. <laughs> but... As to be expected, though, Lincoln does own up to his mistakes. He does apologize to Clyde, and he apologizes to his sisters, too, and even invites them in to take part with the events and lets Clyde have some say in what events they'll do for the sleepover. So good on you, Lincoln, for making amends. That's all we can really ask for is we learn from our mistakes and strive to do better in the future. That's all we can ever ask for anyone. And yeah, I thought this was a nice segment. It helped to give us a little better understanding of Clyde besides just being Lincoln's best friend. Got to see his house, got to meet his parents, got to know a little bit about why he likes hanging around the Loud House. And oh, that's right, Liam and Zach. The reason I bring those two up in particular from the montage is because they go on to become recurring roles. We'll see them in some future segments later, so keep those two in mind. This isn't the last you've seen of them. And yeah, so as you can expect, we'll be covering the B segment tomorrow. Take care and until next time.